Hi everyone, Aaron here for ZoloTech and there's more to talk about with iOS 17 with side loading iOS 18 supposed to get a redesign. We'll talk a little bit about that as well as upcoming updates and iPhone 16 has some additional news as well. This is your weekly Apple news update for the week of November 19th, 2023. Now, Apple has already previewed its holiday sales and savings event and now is given a deadline for ordering if you want to make sure you get it in time for Christmas. If you plan on getting maybe an engraved product, you can see it here where they have holiday gifts just in time and they go over the different time frames you can expect if you order it by this time, you should get it. However, if you want it engraved, it should be ordered before December 12th. But you can see all of the different items here, such as iPhone 15 pro max, most of them need to be ordered by December 21st, but you can see them here. And again, if they need to be engraved, you need to order it a little bit earlier. So that's really nice that they have that. You'll see engraved AirPods, December 13th, some are earlier, some are later, depending on the country you're in as well. Now, Apple's digital car keys have been slowly adopted by some manufacturers and have been rolling out. In fact, Apple actually pushed out a fix to actually resolve an issue where it was overheating the NFC chip in BMWs. Once they've fixed that, now they're going to roll out that Apple car key, it seems to mini. So the next generation mini should have the car key. However, that is owned by BMW. So it makes sense that they would implement that feature. Hopefully we see this brought to more where we can just tap our phone or put it near the car and let it to work automatically using the wallet app instead of a third party app, such as what we have here with different third party keys. Now we know the iPhone 15 models have updated Qualcomm modems with improved speed, but that speed is up to 54% faster when downloading according to tests using Ookla's speed test. On their website, they did a study based off of all of the different download data and found that it was consistently faster across the iPhone 15 models, which it should be in general, but this actually proves that out and shows where it's located as well. I'll link this in the description if you'd like to take a look. Now, before we continue, today's video is sponsored by Anchor. This is the Anchor Nano 20 watt charger, and there's all sorts of sales on the latest chargers as well. I'll link in the description, but this is the charger I carry all the time along with me. If I'm traveling, it's very small and compact along with their cables that handle up to 240 watts with USB-C on either end. So it's great to be able to use these. And then if you want, you have a power bank. So maybe if I'm traveling, I'll bring this with me typically where we have USB-C that's actually two way charging. This is a 10,000 milliamp hour power bank, which actually has a nice display on it. And then you can use USB-A and USB-C when you plug it in. I'll show you the display here. When you plug it in, it lights up on the front, tells you how much power you have left and based on the current charge rate, what you have left remaining in the battery. So it's super compact and easy to bring with you. But if you need something even smaller, they have one that charges at 22.5 Watts and is 5,000 milliamp hours. So if we plug it in here, it also has two way charging on the side here. You can plug in an additional device and charge everything on the go. Now, all of them have anchors active shield 2.0 with dynamic temperature sensors as well. And you can check out anchors whole nano lineup for 2023 with a link in the description. Be sure to check it out. If you're interested now, Tim cook was recently on a podcast, which is pretty rare for him where he was interviewed with Dua Lipa. It's on YouTube. I'll link it in the description, but you can see it here where he had a full interview talking about life, life as a CEO, personal things as well. So be sure to check that out. If you haven't, it's actually about 45 minutes long and that's pretty rare for him to give that kind of an interview. Now, sort of related to iPhone is now we can use USB-C is Samsung announced a new eight terabyte T5 Evo drive, which is priced at $650. They have a one terabyte and four terabyte option as well, but one downside as opposed to the one I typically use, this is the T5 is the actual download speeds or transfer speeds are pretty slow at 460 megabytes per second. So if you need it for storage, it's great. But if not, I would check out one of these as they're much faster, a T5 or a T7 drive then you can record directly to ProRes on it if that's what you want to use it for or just backup. They're super compact and I typically carry this with me if I need something on the side. Now, back in August, one of the most pushed rumors was that we would get a darker finished version of the Apple Watch Ultra 2, maybe a space black version or something along those lines. It seems that Apple was actually working on one based off the recent released FCC certification photos that they submitted in the United States. Before they release a device, they have to submit the different device specifications and photos to the FCC or federal communication commission. And these were leaked and show what it looks like. So we could have had one that was a little darker finish and Apple may have pulled it at the end. Maybe it chipped too easily or something else like the titanium can on some of the newer iPhones. So 
Unfortunately, we don't have one this year. Maybe they're going to release it next year, but I would love to have sort of a space black finish on the Apple Watch Ultra 2. Now, RCS messaging is coming to iOS. We talked about this in depth in a couple different videos and it's replacing SMS and MMS. I was surprised at how many didn't actually want it to be brought to iPhone. So I thought I'd explain it a little bit more. SMS and MMS are the old standards that iOS already uses with iMessage. In the United States, we use iMessage. If you have an iPhone, pretty much everyone uses it and no one uses WhatsApp unless they talk to someone overseas. So this is primarily used and about over 50% of users in the United States are on iPhones and 80% plus teenagers are on iPhones. So typically you would use iMessage and if you're on Android, you would just use the default messaging app, which uses SMS or MMS or now RCS if it's built in. RCS is just a newer standard. It can add additional encryption depending on if people put different layers on them. Apple's working to make that happen, hopefully before they release it as a standard next year. So RCS standard will be coming to iPhone and I think it's just great because it's a new revised version. And if someone on Android sends me a photo, it will finally be in higher resolution. So that's more typical of the United States, but that's why it's so relevant here. It's not really a security risk or anything else. It's replacing SMS and MMS, which aren't encrypted anyway. So it's just a better version of it. Now I get asked almost every day when Apple will be adding the long rumored side loading feature to iOS 17. For those of you not familiar, side loading would basically allow you to install apps outside of the app store. So maybe you would go to a website on Safari, then you'd be able to download the app and install it on your device, just like you can on a Mac and have been able to for years. However, this is something that seems to be pushed by the EU and is forced upon Apple, and that's why it's supposed to come out in 2024 there to comply with laws. iOS 17.2 code hints at sort of them setting this up for developers, and Apple even published a support document showing how developers could add apps, but this is supposedly only for developers right now and won't be public facing. Apple this week filed a legal challenge against the requirements by the EU to allow third-party apps and app stores on iOS as part of the Digital Markets Act. Apple is actually concerned about the security and privacy risks of allowing apps outside the app store. And that's a valid concern. And while this can be a concern, if you don't use it, it shouldn't be much of an issue. Mac users have already been able to do this for years. And however, if you don't want to, you can just download from the app store like you always have. However, there are risks in opening other parts of the operating system up to allow it. But when you do that on a Mac, it actually warns you this is outside the app store. Are you sure you want to open it? So there could be certain protections in place like that. Also a new report from the independent actually goes into detail about how Apple's head of security disagrees with side loading and the risks involved. You can read the full article from the independent for all the details and I'll link it in the description if you want to check it out. Now, as we come closer to black Friday, which is on this coming Friday and Thanksgiving is Thursday. So the next day we should have a bunch of sales, but many of those are live already starting with the AirPods pro two. They're down to $190 sold from Apple on Amazon, along with Apple watch series nine, just about every model is discounted beat studio pro are 169 down from 349. MacBook Air is 250 off, MacBook Pro M3 is 200 off, and even the Anchor chargers are on sale as well. So lots of different discounts this week. I'll link all of those in the description if you want to check them out. Now, when it comes to iOS 18, we talked last week about how Apple is probably going to have a significant update this year, possibly with a redesign. Some of that has sort of been hinted to in the action button UI. Maybe they'll make some changes here, hopefully update the control center and much more. Hopefully it's a huge update from what we have already since it's been a very long time. And many of you seem to actually want that update as well. I did a poll on X and after 15,000 votes, 69% of you actually say you do want an update or a redesign. 16% don't care and 15% said no, they don't want a redesign. So the majority wants one. I think we've been waiting a very long time and it seems to be pretty stale at this point. So hopefully they do something, maybe even just to match the icons that we have on the Mac. That would be welcome. Something different I think would be great. A little fresh reskin or something like that. But let me know your thoughts about that in the comments as more and more people say that this is actually going to happen this year. All of the different leakers and such are saying that we should see something significant. So hopefully we do not just maybe a Siri update, hopefully a big redesign. For those of you wondering about iOS 17.2 beta four and possibly iOS 17.1.2, well, I would not expect any updates this week based on what we have in the feedback app directly from Apple. They're taking the Thanksgiving break off. That means this week from November 18th until the 26th based off of this, they won't be processing feedback and they probably won't be pushing out any updates. 
if we take a look at what they did last year, Apple released iOS 16.1.2 to the public on the 30th. So last year on the 30th, they released that. And then they also released iOS 16.2 beta four on December 1st. So this came a week after what we had with Thanksgiving. So that makes a lot of sense. I wouldn't expect anything this week and we can see those firmware updates next week. So public release possibly along with a beta release as well. One update I didn't mention last week that released later on was an update to the latest USB C version of the Apple pencil. It brings it to version 10 M five one six four, and we don't really know what's new in it. Maybe the improved accuracy, maybe charging speed, something else. We don't really know as they haven't said, but you can check that version on your iPad that it's connected to by going into the settings. So if we go into settings here, we'll unlock, go into our settings. And if you're under general and about, you'll see Apple pencil and you can see the different versions here. So I don't think mine is updated yet. I've got a strange firmware update version as well. So I'll have to see if this will update very soon, but either way it should have a new update exactly what it does though. Again, we don't really know. Now the Qi 2 wireless charging standard has been completed for a while and iPhone 15 models already support it and will be the first devices to actually utilize it. However, similar to how MagSafe works, the new Qi 2 wireless standard uses magnets to align the actual coils to bring better efficiency and improved charging speeds. However, Apple still shows iPhone 15 models can charge up to 7.5 watts. So it's unclear if it will provide any benefit to iPhone 15s, but it will at least support the new standard. Once it releases different chargers later this year, they should be out pretty soon if they aren't already, and they should support the latest charging standards. This will be great for Android phones as well as they'll align magnets on the back to help for better charging also. Now, as far as rumors and leaks this week, many have complained for years that Apple actually runs their iPhone chips far too hot and doesn't get rid of the heat well enough. The latest information from leaker Kosutami suggests that Apple is finally going to work on a better thermal design for iPhone 16 models. This would include using a graphite heat sink to dissipate some of that heat, but also a battery encased in metal for the pro models. You can see some of the leaks here and apparently they've been working on this to really help with the overall heat next time around. We thought this was coming more recently, but it seems like they're working on it now with the latest chipsets. Apple's also been working on their own 5g modems to replace the Qualcomm modems inside the iPhones. We have Qualcomm's modems. Apple has to pay royalties to them as well. And apparently Apple continues to face delays according to Mark Gurman. And instead of showing up in 2025, it may be delayed even longer to 2026 or beyond. So Apple's really working on that, but for whatever reason, there's delays. But once they do bring it around, it seems it will be coming to Mac as well. We haven't had modems in the Mac yet for 5G or LTE or anything, and we should see those once they release their own chipset. Now, the dynamic island is something that people either really love or seem to not like at all. I find it to be pretty convenient, but it's not anything I would run out and buy the phone over. However, that latest feature with the dynamic island may be coming to iPad and other devices as well, according to the latest leaks by Majin Boo. So that was actually pushed out on X and you can see it, the tweet here or whatever we call that now. So maybe we'll see that on future devices. However, I don't think they should intrude this little sort of cutout on an iPad as well. Maybe they could put it at the top and we just wouldn't see it in the bezel. Something like that I think would be welcome for most phones and iPads and everything else just to add consistency, but I don't want it to cut into the display. According to ET news in Korea, it seems that the OLED displays are definitely coming to Apple devices. This seems to be confirmed every week now. And by 2027, not only iPads will have that display, but also Macs as well. Even the iPad mini is said to be gaining OLED in the future. This would lead to better blacks in the background. There are some disadvantages to it as well, as far as maybe color changing over time and not as accurate but then Apple is said to eventually move to micro led. So maybe that will just hold them over until then and will allow for different designs that are thinner, possibly more power efficient as well. Apple has said the new vision pro headset will launch in early 2024 and this week's power on newsletter by Mark Gurman at Bloomberg. It seems that may not be until March because it's not ready yet. So there seems to be some delays with it. Maybe it's manufacturing components or something else, but Apple did say early 2024 and that can mean quite a few months into that year. So we'll have to wait and see what they do. Hopefully it will be earlier rather than later, but let me know if you're even interested in Apple vision pro in the comments. 
And so that's everything with the news this week. Lots of different deals. Of course, I'll link those all in the description, like I said, and lots of things to look forward to, but no updates probably this week as well. Let me know what you're looking most forward to in the comments below. And if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.